One of the absolutely key resources you can have is dice. The minute you produce dice, the children think of board games and fun. <laughs> We play lots of dice games in circles because it's really nice. The children can actually pass the dice around the circle as they go. On five. And a really simple one is just take a big dice, roll, and as it's your turn, you count on. So you're adding cumulatively. Eight add one is... Nine. Good boy. The only rule in the game is don't roll a six. Don't get a six. Don't get a six. <laughs> because if you roll a six, the game's bust and the team score goes back to zero. No! Brilliant. Let's have a birds race because it's your topic. OK, so what we've got is 12 different birds. And this is how the race goes. We're going to roll two dice and we're going to add up the total. And the bird whose number gets scored gets to move up the racetrack. And the first bird to cross the finish line is the winner. Heads. Heads. We're off. Three. Three. And you very simply roll two dice add up the numbers and cover the total. And what's lovely is they will do at least 20 sums in the space of about five minutes. Their level of motivation, their level of engagement, their level of fun will be about 100 times higher than if they'd done a worksheet. Four and four is... Using two dice can become a fantastic tool for teaching addition, counting on, subtraction, anything. And what you're doing is you're doing assessment. Because what you're looking at is how they're doing that adding. Six. Ten! Okay, I'll just be ten. Are they counting on from the largest number? Or what you want, really, in year one, are they just looking at what they rolled and saying the answer? OK, hands up if number six won your race. Are you the same pair, Arthur and Sam? Yeah. Two votes for number six, then. Almost every time I've done it, somebody will, in their own way, articulate the quite complex probability that seven and six and eight are much more likely to be rolled than two or twelve. Eight won your race. One, two, three, four, five, six. And there's a real sense that the children's understanding of numbers and number patterns and how numbers are made um, has moved on just in that very simple lesson. I've got a little bit of a puzzle for us. Each letter in these words is given a number below 10. And the value of the letters in each word are then multiplied together, OK? Given that bat is 90, let is 168, and bet is 105, what is the value of table? Now, what do you think I mean by bat B-A-T equals 90. What does that mean? B at A at T equals 90. That's a really good mistake, Miranda, because a lot of people would think that B at A at T equals 90. It's not quite adding. Does anyone know what we might do? B times them together. That's it, Sam. We're saying that B times A times T equals... 90. With these code breaking activities, you give yourself a set of letters and you give each letter a numerical value. You then create words out of the letters. What would be a good place to start? Have bat 90, let 168, and bet. Have any of those numbers got anything in common? Do you look at those numbers? Does anything jump out at you? Jasper? Um. Bat and bet have one letter difference, and they're like, one of them's 15 more than the other one. Okay, 
What does that tell us about the E? The value of E is... Higher. Well done, than the value of... A. A, so that's something we know. Brilliant. In looking at 90 and looking at 105, what, is, what about those two numbers rings a bell? What have they both got in common? What do you reckon, Tasnu? They're both in the five times table. Well done, they're both in the five times table. They are, aren't they? So I think it's a really good bet that B is going to equal five. Often children are fearful of maths, um, especially as they, as they go through school. When you experience failure, it can compound those feelings that it's not something you're good at. And one thing we teach the children is there isn't a maths part of your brain. There's the same part of you that can do maths is the same part of you that you know, can work out strategies when you're outside playing football. If we're saying that B equals five, we're actually saying five times a number times a number is 90. So what I want you to do is see how many combinations of numbers you can get. Five times a number times a number equals 90. When you're making these up yourself, a really good thing to remember is that you can make really easy versions of this code breaking for children who find maths a struggle. And the great thing about that, especially with older children who might be quite self-conscious that they're finding it challenging, is the easy ones look just the same as the more difficult ones. So it's that sense that everybody feels like they're doing the same activity, but actually you're being very supportive to the less able children whilst extending the more able and supporting everybody in between. What you're going to do now is using what you know already, using that you know that A and T could be what numbers? What numbers could they be? Uh, they could be six and three. Yep, or three and six. What else could the A and T be? Bruska? Um, it could be nine or two. Could be nine and two, or two and nine. So using what you know already, you're going to go off and you're going to work out the values of each of the letters, B, A, T, L and E. And so, finally, you need to work out the value of table, which is T times A times B times L times E. I like them to use a calculator to find out that final large multiplication. I think the key here is that the skill that they want to get out of this is making the connections between the numbers and feeling that they're solving that puzzle. I think T is three because it's in all of the words and all of the words equal a number that is a multiple of three. These type of number puzzles and, and code breakers are brilliant for helping children to see that if they go for it and if they get involved in a puzzle, that they can solve all sorts of difficult maths without really even realising, because with puzzles, code breakers, anything where they have to figure something like that out, they're often quite fearless and they'll take risks. With maths, if you know it's maths, and I know lots of adults feel this, if you know it's maths, then sometimes there's a part of you that seizes up. And as soon as you seize up, you stop thinking creatively and making the connections that you need to make to get better at maths. Each team gets four rolls. We're going to roll the dice and your team has to decide whether you want to keep the number you roll or times it by 10. Four rolls to 100 is a great game for sort of year two, year three, when the children are beginning to know their number bonds to 10, and also they should be familiar with 10 lots of a number. So if your team black team rolled five, you could choose five, or you could choose 50. 50. And then I'm gonna write that in the first circle. And at the end of four rolls for each team, the team with an answer closest to 100 will win. Each team has four circles. And you sort of chair the game, team A, team B. And when you roll the dice for the team, they have to decide if they want to keep that number or multiply it by 10. 10. Great. They give you their decision. You put it on the board in the relevant circle. And let's have the B team. 
Six. Ashante, what do you want to do? Keep it a six or times it by ten? Keep it a six. Okay. You've got a three, Luca. Um, 30. You're going to times it by 10, 30. Five, what are you going to do? <gasps> Shahino. 50. Good boy, you're going to times it by 10. What is it? Sam. 30. OK. So, 18, what do you need to roll to get a perfect score? Samaya. Three. And what would you do with a three? Um, times it by ten. And have thirty. Absolutely brilliant. Right, B team, you're on fifty-six. Here we go. You've got a. And there's so many opportunities to be testing the children's mental skills, their their facility with number, their their ability to kind of see a hundred square, see a number line. And because again, it's a game and it's dice and it's competitive, it just works. Ninety-six. OK, people, look at this. Could this game be a draw? Yes. yes. Alice, can you really carefully explain how it could be a draw? We could both get 100 because we could, if we got a four, then we would be on our 100. And if they got um, three, they can times it by 10 and make 30, and they would get um, 100. So, potentially, we've got another draw. A good lesson becomes outstanding if you take the time to see the opportunities for the questions, to think of the question for that low-achieving boy that will include him and make him feel good and part of it all. And you've also got up your sleeve a really good, probing, extended question for that very bright boy. So what do you want to do? Ben? Times 2 by 10 to make 20. And then your total will be? 90. Brilliant. You can spend hours with that game. It's got its infinite possibilities. Three. three. What do you want to do? Marcus. Keep it. Keep it as three. Which takes your total to 99, which means you're the winners! Yay! One of the best resources we have in school, and one of the things I would put in my top five, is dice absolutely vital for number work. We discovered this fantastic thing, clear view pocket die, where you have the dice comes with clear pockets and you can decide what you want your dice to be. And it works so well in terms of size and what it's made of. You can play a whole class game with the infants and not injure anybody because it's soft and filled with foam. And you can change what the sides are. Here we've got one where the teacher was rolling and then the children were collecting shapes from the 3D box with faces like that. So it's a, it's a great resource, it's very versatile, they last a long time and we love them. Mm -hmm.